Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. So today we're just going to be chatting about life updates, what's been happening, and seeing where the conversation goes. So Kelly, what's been new for you lately? I actually feel like we haven't talked in like a couple of days. Yeah, honestly, I'm honestly the worst texter ever, and there's so many texts I need to get back to. But Katie, I do get back to you sometimes. <laughs> But what's been happening since I got back from Europe, I'm not sure I mentioned it. Actually, I think I did. But my partner has moved in with me, and that's been a really big transition in our relationship and trying to keep that polarity um, and the passion alive in our relationship by having some space and having dedicated date nights and things like that um, has been a really, really big shift. And I think, honestly, for the first time ever, I've realized, like, this is my first real healthy relationship. And part of me is kind of like, oh, well, it's just so normal that is something wrong, right? And I've no, I've noticed that pattern because in the past, it's always unhealthy relationships, men that are like flaky as, you know, they're here one second and then they're not and they can't commit and all of these things. And now having a man that's fully, fully committed to me is something really different. And my nervous system is truly because – for him to move in and, you know, that is another level of safety and security in your relationship. It's another level of commitment, right? And so my nervous system is kind of reacting to that, honestly. And it's something that I'm actually going to be working on in the next couple of weeks with my kinesiologist. So after this call, actually, after this podcast, I am actually going to see my kinesiologist or our kinesiologist, Amber. Yeah, that's so interesting because a lot of people don't recognize how they are attached to drama in their life, especially if you were raised in a really like unstable household where there was just a lot of fights, arguments, drama, and then you go to school and it's like all your friendship groups, it's like gossip, and you don't actually know what it's like to live in a calm, regulated environment with people who aren't triggering you, where there's no drama, and your mind goes, what's wrong? Why Why aren't there, why isn't there cortisol in my brain right now? Why am I feeling so calm? This is not normal. It's normal to have drama all the time. And so then what can happen is we actually manufacture drama, right? We can actually go into, I'm feeling so safe that the alarm bells are going off because I've never felt safe like this in my life. So let's manufacture drama, right? And sometimes that can happen in relationships. And if you feel like you've done all the work, but now you've attracted a healthy man. And this is like speaking to the audience, not you, Kelly, because I know like obviously you're actively, you are so aware of that. But for people in the audience who are like, I have this amazing man and nothing's wrong, but I still feel like I'm sabotaging the relationship. It's because the relationship can actually be so healthy that your nervous system isn't ready for that level of regulation. You know what I mean? It's like it craves drama because it doesn't know what it's like to just be smooth sailing. And so that's another thing that's so important to recognize and doing that work, as you said, to be like, no, this is my baseline. I don't need to constantly chase after those men who are always unavailable, who always come and go, who are avoidant. It's like problems all the time. It's like, I don't want that. Yet when it feels safe, it feels scary. So being able to balance both of that those things in your life a hundred percent and I think that it's so unconscious so that we're not aware and so what I see for a lot of people is they sort of just jump from relationship to relationship because all they want is the honeymoon phase and they want that oh excitement mm. and the chase and oh my god the man wants me and but you know oh and it's all this unknown and all this oh like what's gonna happen are we gonna be exclusive or not actually so funny I was having this chat with one of my girlfriends last night who she knows she has a pattern of attracting emotionally unavailable men and she said I'm not gonna lie i fucking love the drama she said yeah. i love the fact that are they gonna block me today are they gonna ghost me like am oh i ever gonna hear God. from them again yeah but the thing is we don't realize and part of her is like why am i attracting this but another part she's like look i know that deep down i crave and thrive off that My drama gosh. she loves the uncertainty it's like yeah what's gonna happen today it's like it's the drama ever unfolding adventure which is so wild but at least she has that awareness right and there was something else I was going to say about that but it slipped my mind let it come to you because I was going to say how 
So many of us think that we can only find excitement in the honeymoon phase and in the unknown oh, yes. and in Who's the, that? Ooh, are we going to, like, what's going to happen? You know, like when you're dating someone, you're like, oh, I'm not sure what they're going to say. Like, are we going to be exclusive or not? And that can be very exciting. You can actually find excitement in depth. You can find excitement in the safety. Mm. And I think some of us don't realize that. Like, you're entering a whole new level in your relationship and that can be exciting too. Yeah, that's something that I want to say as well, because so many of us are also afraid to enter into a committed long-term relationship because we fear that the honeymoon phase is going to end and we're just going to get into this, like, just, you know, casual. Oh, I know what you're going to say. You know what I mean? And it's like, then people are always, people say this and we actually had this conversation of, can you have a sexy, passionate, polarized relationship in the long term, like three, five, ten years down the line, or is it just the honeymoon phase and then just expect like, yeah, like we're having sex like once a month or not even and just like we're not going on dates and like there's no passion there. And I truly believe that, yes, the honeymoon phase is the honeymoon phase, but after the honeymoon phase isn't the we've settled phase unless you actually choose that because a relationship requires constant effort in order to ignite that. So after the honeymoon phase, it isn't about getting back to the honeymoon phase. It's actually getting into this new phase of your relationship where we're so intimate, we're so vulnerable, we're so deep, as you said, Kelly, which is like even better than that honeymoon phase. Like, I'm not sure, like you're so connected with one another, yet you still prioritize passion and playfulness and sex and all that because you're you're actively putting in the effort. I truly believe that I'm not available for this crap of like, yeah, you just get married and you just settle and you just like, yeah, the, the passion's not there. Like, fuck that. Like, I am not available for that crap. I don't subscribe to this narrative. And this is the whole thing that what we talk about, I'm only here and I'm only available for an extraordinary life, extraordinary life in my business, in my mission, in the wealth that I create, in relationships, in, you know, the relationship with my lover as well. You don't have to compromise and be like, well, I get to be successful in in business, but then that means that I'll just have to settle in relationships, but it also does require two people. And I truly believe that it's like, well, okay, if you're feeling stagnant in your relationship, um, how often are you being emotionally intimate? Are you sitting down and eye gazing for like five minutes? Are you giving each other massages? Are you surprising each other with cute things? Are you, as Kelly said, like, even if you're living together, creating some distance and separation to make the heart grow fonder so that you're not always taking each other for granted, right? So all of that is, you know, you have to be an active participant in the relationship. And especially if you're unhappy and a lot of women, they're just like, I don't want to bring it up. Like it's his responsibility. It's also your responsibility if you're unhappy to bring that up and be like, hey, nothing's really wrong, but I'm not feeling passionate in it. And so, yes. yeah. And you are actually, you you think that when you, you don't want to bring things up because you don't want to upset your man or whatever, but you are mm. literally disrespecting him by not bringing it up. Because I had this conversation on part of the other day and I was like, look, babe, there is nothing wrong in our relationship, but it can be even greater than what it is right now. And he was like to me, babe, I know you've been feeling this way and you haven't been saying anything and I'm not going to push you to say something. But what he was explaining is how a man that's fully in love with you, nothing makes him happier. This is what my partner said. He was like, nothing makes me happier in this entire fucking world than seeing you happy. So he said, when you keep this inside what do you think it does to me? He's like, it affects me because I see that you're not fully happy, but I can't understand why there's nothing I can do, right? If you don't tell me, you don't share with me. So you are actually disrespecting your man by not sharing these things with you. And what is happening with your body? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to adjust my camera. It looks like you're taking photos. <laughs> To make it bright, and I'm like, holy shit, that's too bright. I just is my like, volume super spoke. loud, or are you screaming? No, is this my? Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> no, no. sorry. Um, <laughs> like I tried to adjust, I'm like, that is way too much. Your volume is really loud. Oh okay. I don't know why. On. No, maybe it's just me. I don't know why. Oh, you need to like probably turn down your volume on. Oh your okay. Receiving it. Okay okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna but, yeah. say? What was I gonna say? Um. 
Oh, but this only applies to healthy relationships, right? Like this is only, I can only say this because I'm in a healthy relationship. My partner cares so deeply about my happiness and he cares so deeply about having these really open, honest conversations, which honestly makes me at the beginning, actually for a long while made me super uncomfortable like my partner's ability to just have a real real honest conversation where he's like I want to know everything about how you're feeling and let's talk about this let's resolve it and I'm like I've never had this in my whole life and I feel so vulnerable and I feel so seen and it feels scary like I thought that I had truly worked on all my shit and you can work on it but then when you're in it it's still a, it's still vulnerable because it's the first time I've ever done that with a partner if that makes sense yeah and actually as you said like taking that responsibility because you can't expect a a mind a guy to read (laughs) your mind and know that you're unhappy and sometimes it's like i'll notice people in their relationship it's like there's something there but they won't notice it so it's like this elephant in the room and they keep cruising and they're both kind of explodes yeah and they're both kind of like someone's gonna bring it up whatever or let's just ignore it like they're playing this freaking game it's like i don't want to play games with my spouse with my partner like just bring it together, become aware and actively put in the effort. Like, honestly, if you're not having date nights once a week, even if you're five years in, like, of course you're not feeling passionate and of course you're not feeling sexy. And then take that into your own responsibility as well. Like for women, for example, or I hear so many women, they're like, oh my gosh, like, like, I don't want to have sex with my man. And like, I have to give it to him tonight and all this stuff. It's like, what is wrong with your relationship where you like don't want to be intimate you know what I mean because for me it's like I often like want more than like the guy because you know why I'm in my sexual power and obviously there are other things too and a lot of the time when we avoid um sexual intimacy it's because we're not being emotionally intimate and so there's that brick wall like I've heard about um you know sexual therapists and all that when they actually work with couples it's not on opening up their sex life. It's like your sex life reflects your emotional intimacy with each other. You're not speaking to each other in like there's something you're hiding. And so therefore that's why sexually you feel stagnant, but also in yourself, like so many of us women complain, like men aren't giving me foreplay, men aren't giving me this and that. Well, how are you seducing yourself? Are you having the best self-love sessions with yourself and then you're feeling so turned on. So your guy is like, oh, like that ignites me, right? Rather than like both of you are waiting, like, why aren't you turning me on? And like, are you I'm communicating that though? You. And I think so yeah. many of us, we think that there is like this perfect man, the one who already knows everything about us and knows exactly what we want and knows exactly how to touch us and turn us on and all these things. Honestly, I don't believe that exists. I believe that exists because you communicate. Yeah. Right. You because teach him. You, yes. And then because he, he knows you because you've communicated it. You're not just hiding it inside. Like secretly, I love like subdom dynamics. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> and like, he should just know me. Like, how is he going to know that? Right. Like you need to actually tell people, tell, sorry, tell, 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 tell people, tell people, yeah. what, you know, tell your partner what it is that you love and you like and exactly what you want. Like, I want my hair to be pulled. I want you to like touch me gently like this, like be so specific. And that's, and men are very good at that. I feel they're super clear about what they want, about how they want to be touched and all of these things and women, not so much sometimes. And if you're not being clear like that, literally, how can your man know they are not mind readers? Literally. So I'm loving this whole conversation. Um, I wanted to also talk about what has been happening recently in my life, which is a lot of just trying new things. So it's really interesting because everything has been so synchronistic. It's just like confirmations everywhere. So when it comes to um, last night, I went to a cacao ceremony Reiki and sound bath. And one of my goals for this year has been every single week attend like a healing or like a community type of event to deepen that and also get into communities of spiritually like-minded people. Like we often complain, where are the people, but you're working a nine to five corporate job and you're not getting out there into the spiritual circles. Like they're there, you've got to actively actively look for them. Um, And so I pulled the card, get out of your like comfort zone and saying but you have things. been you so that's what have I'm saying already yeah so that's what I'm saying I don't think the card was telling me do it more but I think the card was confirming what I've already been doing and I feel like that started 
this year with like going to Europe, paragliding. And then since then, it's like, how can I try something new every single week? Salsa, ecstatic dance, shamanic breath work, like literally uh, learning about past lives. Like there's always something new that I have been learning, like the glucose eating method, everything. Like I have learned so much this year. I have um, just been so in alignment with what I'm feeling called to do. And it's amazing how just we're so in a bubble and you don't realize that actually going out there and trying new things is going to reactivate your brain and create these new neural connections so that you see the world differently and then you show up differently as well so everything's being connected so that thing of like get outside of your comfort zone and then there's been so many messages lately of past life stuff and the books I've been reading and the conversations that I've been having on that so cool I really have seen you open up so much like in the last month than I have like ever I mean I've seen you open up so much in terms of manifestation and learning but this time I've really seen you open up socially and you know just fully doing things that you know, normally you wouldn't go and do. And I find that that's so, it's such a shift and such a change for you. Yeah, actually, that was one big thing as well. It's like the opening up um, with friendships. Are your eyes bigger now? <laughs> My eyes bigger? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing of like when your eyes are so closed, it's because you're not like open and seeing the world. And when we were studying kinesiology together, mm. um, our teacher said to Katie, I want to see your eyes open more and compared to, do you take a photo at the very beginning of yeah. the class and versus the end? Her eyes got bigger, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. And it's so interesting because I, like, if you look now, I've always had this thing in my life where my face is quite asymmetrical. And someone pointed it out in my live today, which is so funny. But I have one eye that has, like, a double lid and one eye that doesn't, has, like, a mono lid, and that one's, like, quite small. And um, the one that's bigger is on the left. So that is, like, the feminine or like into myself and the other ones like external. Mm. And so I feel like I've always seen a lot of like within myself, but then not necessarily translating that outwardly in my relationships, for example. And this is the thing of your identity is never set. Yes, I believe we have a soul blueprint and our souls kind of have a bit of a personality, but broad things of like, am I approachable or am I friendly or am I just such an introvert and hermit and I literally can't get along with anyone? Like that's not your identity. That is just something that you've claimed because of your past, but you can shift that. And so for me, I've always been super introverted. I've always been like, I feel like I am not an approachable person. Like my energy was always so close. Like I wouldn't talk to strangers. And as like I've grown and evolved, it's like being comfortable with that, but recognizing that I was never open to people because I was always close to myself, right? And so the more that I was like open with myself, vulnerable with myself, now my energy is so open. And like I talk to strangers all of the time. People, strangers talk to me and come up to me all the time. I'm having all these amazing conversations. I don't wait for people to initiate. I like wherever I go, I just sit down like, oh, hi, I'm Katie. Like, what's your name? Like, who are you? And then we just start having this incredible conversation. Like every single person I talk to, we connect on such a deep level. I've made, made new connections, new friendships and all of that. And, you know, a few years ago, it would have been like, that's just not who I am. Like, I'm just a closed person. I'm just an introvert. But that is such a limiting mentality to say this is your identity when you can actually choose. Like, I realize I no longer want to be that person. I'm no longer available for this person who just always feels awkward and has to wait for other people to initiate. Like, no. Like, and that's also self-leadership, right? Of If you want to really be the leader, are you leading yourself with your friends, with, you know, your life? Or are you just always waiting for things to come to you? And there's that balance of, like, feminine and masculine for example I'm very feminine with my um, romantic relationships and like I would never approach a guy personally I would always let a guy initiate because that feels very the that dynamic feels very icky to like have me leading a male but you know in your friendships and with yourself and just starting conversations like I would always be waiting for someone else and now that's really changed because I've decided I, I, I just want to live differently right? And when you decide that identity, that's who you get to be. You know, I want to be a better speaker. I want to be more open. I want to be more intimate. I want to be more sexual, more feminine. 
choose that. Find that spark within yourself and just grow that bigger. And that's what I love. We're so multidimensional that you can literally have all these different facets. That's forever changing. And what so many of us don't realize is that almost everyone is waiting for someone else to initiate and then we just Mm. don't connect. It's like, and I am not like that at all. You know, I am very much like, I just message first Let's like, to my friends. I'm like, let's do this. Let's book this. It's like, stop waiting. And like, and I feel like we wait because we are scared and we think like, oh, well, if they really want to see me, they'll put in the effort. They're probably thinking the same thing Literally. about you. Literally. They're probably thinking the same thing. And a really good way or interesting thing to think about is when I was, especially when I was traveling around in Europe and I was like, I'm confused at where to go. And I need to ask someone like, where is this bus stop? because the map says it's here and it's not here. Mm. I'm looking around for someone to ask, how do I decide who I'm going to ask their energy? Is their energy open or is their energy closed? Like, do not fucking talk to me, (laughs) right? Mm. And so you can see if you are being approached by random people, you have this open, like, kind of energy that people can feel, right? And that's what you're saying, Kate, that as you've opened up more, um, within yourself, but that p- random strangers and stuff are talking to you more, which they didn't before. And that the only thing that changed is mm-hmm. your energy. You've changed your style a million times. It's nothing to do with yeah. your, your appearance, right? It's to do with your energy. Yeah. And that's the thing as well that I often get questions around, you know, how do you set boundaries or how do you get people to like treat you in a certain way? So even though before maybe like my energy wasn't open and I wouldn't like have as many conversations with strangers, I like am always often treated well. Like I don't have, I hear these stories of people saying this person treated me like this and it was so crap and like people overstep my boundaries. Like I really don't have that in my life. Like I don't have people just being so brutally horrible to me because of my energy because people can feel that I'm like, if you were rude to me, that's it. Like, I'll just cut you out of my life. I actually have no problem with that. And so it's really interesting because I notice some people in, in my life and they'll treat me differently to, for example, someone else. And what's different is literally just our energy and what we're available for and what we're not. Like Because I'm you're an embodiment with- of, mm. you're, you embody um, your boundaries. And for a lot of people, they say their boundaries, but they don't embody it. And people can feel that. Right. And especially when it comes to men and like a man pursuing a woman, for example, my friend, she says, always says like, where are all the good men at? She's like, where, oh how, where do you find these guys that treat you like so good and all of these things. And I, you, I can literally feel with her energy that she will tolerate bullshit. And she does yeah. like she tolerates men who cancel on her last minute and oh then she God. will still speak to them. And I'm like, I'm telling you that there is no oh, guy no way. that no would way. ever do that with me. Like even with my partner, remember, actually, I didn't tell him how being on time is important for me. Even if yeah. he's five, 10 minutes late, I was like, yeah. And I told you, I'm like, that's not like for me. If a guy is on time, he's late. A guy should always be there waiting for you at the date spot when you arrive. Otherwise it's like, how are you leading me? Like you want me to wait here by myself? You know what yeah. I mean? But the thing is, you can tell whether or not a guy is truly into and really gives a shit about you, right? Yeah. When you set these boundaries, like I said to my partner, like I was like, no, this is just, it's just not, it's just not okay. And it's, it's important that you mm. come on time. And ever since then, actually, he gave me this really huge apology and it was really, really cute. Yeah. I remember that. I <laughs> really remember cute. That. He gave me a hat. He gave me a handwritten note. Um, and the thing was my partner was late because he works, um, I get a corporate job, right? And so he would finish his work, but last minute someone's like, no, we want you to do this, you know? And in in the in the realm that he's living in and working in, the reality is that when you do that work, you're more recognized and whatever, you know, things like that. So he's got to do that. Then he texts me, no, babe, I'm going to be 30 minutes late. Can we reschedule dinner? And I was just like, I get it. And I fully understand it. But no, it's important that you tell me in advance because my time is super, super important and valuable. And he straight away was like, he fully got it. And he wrote me this really cute handwritten note with these gifts and the gifts that I love and and food that tasted so good. And ever since then, he's never, ever, ever been late. If you communicate a boundary, if you communicate a boundary to a man and they don't acknowledge it, don't honor it, they don't care about you enough. They don't care enough about you. 
because they would be scared. If they did, they would be scared to lose you, right? My partner mm. always says, I know that this, this, and this is important to you. So of course I'm going to do those things. So if a guy, if you're wondering, how do I get a guy to do this? Is you don't get a guy to do anything. The right mm. man will do those things because he is that into you. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing of like, what you tolerate is what you accept in your life. Like the same with me, honestly, Mm -hmm. if a guy was like late on a first date and then didn't pay, yeah, I'm not even like messaging you again. I'm not even like entertaining that. Some people might see that as harsh. First date, people are on their best behavior. If you're not putting in that much effort and that's how you're going to act from the beginning, no way. Like I know that the type of guy that I want puts in so much effort that he goes above and beyond, right? And so there's also a difference between um, spoken boundaries and um, non-spoken boundaries. So even with that, Callie, um, like you can say to a guy, I don't like you being late, but you can also tell him in other ways of like maybe just like not saying anything or like not, um, you know, replying to him or when he's like, oh, let's like, you know, reschedule this date or something. It's like you don't actually respond to his message and that teaches him more than you necessarily needing to say like, oh, you did this, this, and this, and that's okay. And that's great, definitely. I feel like when you're not dating the person, right, because it's different. Because yeah. when, you know, in the early stages, I think people listen to this and they do get confused because they, they no, hear yeah. what I've said and it's like, okay, I've said this because it's my boyfriend, it's my partner, yes. and, we, I, and communication is important. But I'm not going to say this stuff to a guy that I've seen, gone on two dates with and been like, yeah. if you come late, I'm cancelling dinner. It's like, no, yeah. that is where also it's just way it's too over like communication. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you guys are not necessarily a thing yet, but you can show mm. your, in your actions in other ways. And it's not about playing games. It's not no. about playing games. It's about, okay, if he's going to message you on Friday saying, Hey, like we should hang out. Do you want to hang out on Saturday night? It's like, you need to say no, because if you're saying mm. yes, you are, ele- you're telling him it's okay to message yes. me last minute to organize something. Is you're it okay? Entertaining. No. Yeah. You're entertaining his behavior. And so he doesn't see what he's done wrong. And, and that's who's to problem. blame for that. If yeah. you, if you say yes, if he asks you Friday night, let's hang out on Saturday and Saturday is a very valuable day. Right. Mm. And you're like, yeah, all good. You are literally telling him, Hey, that is okay. And he, mm. of course, is going to do it again. And why are we there blaming him, right, when we are the ones that have said, that is all good. He's going to do that next time. And men exactly. accidentally do this. They test out, well, what is okay and what is not. If I, if he keeps coming half an hour late to pick you up and you don't say anything, how is he meant to know that it actually annoys you and it's not okay? This is the thing, women. So I'm saying women, but, like, almost women. everyone here lives up, cost, cost, I'm pretty sure are women. Um, is men do not know that you're unhappy unless you like outwardly either say it or show it. So if a guy is constantly late and you don't like it, but you don't show it or you don't mention it, he actually doesn't know that you're unhappy until you show it by like not messaging or saying something, right? So you need to be responsible for realizing a man cannot read your mind and you need to make it clear from the beginning what are your boundaries and standards? Like, is your standard that a guy has to pay on a date? Okay, then why are you continuously going out with men who aren't paying or men who are early or men who, um, you know, don't book last minute? Then reply to that saying, hey, like, I'm I'm already busy. Like, you can book with me. You can book in a date next week. Even just something like that, he'll be like, oh, okay, she's a woman of high value and she actually doesn't do things last minute because she's busy and she's got a life. And so I recognize that she's not there at every beck and call. And so I need to put in that effort to be proactive. So your actions and your words are sending him a message. And I saw this really great reel the other day, which was like how to test a guy on dating apps. They called it like the thirst trap photo. So put like all the good photos and put like a bikini, like thirst trap photo. And any guy who likes that photo, not any other photo, that's the photo where he responds to or he likes it. That's obviously him just wanting a thirst trap, like just wanting sex or whatever, because you're testing him as a woman to see are you going to like like the face photo or are you going to like the bikini one? And so that's how us as women can also test men and see like if he's only responding to like sexual 
you know, energy that I'm putting out there and not responding to anything else, we can see what is interested in. So yes, men initiate, but women test with our energy to see what is the intention and motivation of the guy I'm seeing. I thought that was so funny um, as a little, yeah, just dating app hack and apparently some men were like I do it the opposite where like I will um like that and then like if a woman replies and obviously like that's all she wants or like something like that I don't even know but mm. I was like Whoa, okay. so, interesting some games there yeah and like this is it's so interesting that we've we actually started this episode and we were like let's have a chat and see what we end up talking about I love that it's mm. like a dating relationship type um episode right now and it's just so great and I'm remembering back into the early days of when me and my partner started dating and I remember that I left it all up to him to organize whenever he wanted to see me not whenever sorry like when he wanted to see me and I made it very clear in the beginning I was like I make my plans like a week in advance yeah so I very particular with like your weekend is like so precious to you yeah so especially in the beginning of when we would um dating I remember that in the past when I did not have high standards I would leave my weekends free in hopes that a guy that I like would ask to see me oh my gosh like anxious attachment red flag which is like I used to do the same literally and this is a thing for anyone like listening how to know if you have anxious attachment is you literally won't make plans for yourself because you're hoping that a guy will fill that time slot and don't feel shameful that you've been like that because we've been like that and we've Literally. had shitty guys and dealt with ridiculous, like, you know, it's crazy, crazy things. And it's all, mm. you can always change it. You can always change it. And so for me, it went, when I met um, my now partner, Sam, and I knew that I was interested, I made sure I was like, I am going to continue to live my life the way that I normally yeah. have. I'm going to book everything in. And there will be times I'd book out majority of my weekend and I'd be like, well, he hasn't asked to hang out. So that's his problem. He's and lost. He, Yes, and he would. He learned very early on. He was. He would say to me, "What days this week are you free? When mm. can I see you?" I love that. And guys, this is the thing. Or girls, like when a guy then does that, you're like, "Oh, I feel so wanted," because he's chasing you. He's like, "Oh, I and need cares. to like pursue." Yeah. Versus like, oh, if you just leave it open, and then a guy's like, "Oh." Like he's, he always knows you're free because you don't have a freaking life. And he knows that anytime he asks to hang out with you, you're available. You're kind of just, you don't actually feel as valued by him because he's not putting in extra effort. When you make it too easy for a guy, he doesn't have to put in too much effort to secure you. And so then you kind of feel like, Oh, like I want to be chased a little bit. And how do you feel valued if you allow him to book with you last minute and Mm. him to just... And, and to fuck up plans. And my partner would do yeah. that in the beginning. He, cause he's too busy. He works a nine to five, more like bloody 8am to 6pm. No excuses because mm-hmm. a guy will literally bend his whole reality to make it work with the woman that he wants to. The, exactly. With the woman that he wants to. I am my partner's first real relationship. He's been on, like he's been on plenty of dates. There are many women who wanted to be with him. Right. But he wasn't willing to change any part of his life or compromise or do anything for these people, not because they weren't doing the things that we're talking about necessarily, but because it wasn't the right person realizing that there is a guy out there for you that is willing to do anything for you. And my partner has said that word for word. He is like, I love you so much. I would do anything you wanted me to do. That's the kind of guy that you want to be with, not some guy that you need that is not willing to change or do anything for you. It's simply not the right person because I'm telling you right now, there is a woman out there that that guy that you like is willing to change everything for. He will literally move mountains. Like a man will move mountains to be with the woman that he loves and knows. And this is the thing of so many women get then disrespected and feel um just like unloved when they're like, well, why is he putting in so much effort? Why isn't he moving mountains for me? He's not the guy. That's it. Or and- are you being too masculine? Mm. That you are not of giving course. him any space or room to do anything. And I see that with women that are like, I book and plan everything. Oh my God. I do and everything. Like- How can he show you that he loves you? If every Monday you're like, I've already planned our whole weekend. I've booked it all. It's done. Like mm. your man, of course, is going to say, yeah, sure. Great. Thanks. I love that. But maybe. Actually, a real masculine man wouldn't say that. <laughs> Perhaps. He'd be like, 
I actually want to treat you. I'm going to book it this weekend mm-hmm, or next mm-hmm. weekend. But, but like we when, can't. Sorry, go I, on. Well, I was going to say. But a masculine man isn't isn't attracted to a woman who initiates. So if you want to attract a masculine man and you're wondering why it's all feminine men, it's actually you. Like I do not attract weak beta males and they can see that because I'm literally like, like I, what was I going to say? Like I'm too, so I'm so feminine that they realize like they need to step it up. You know what I mean? But I'm also very confident in myself as well. So I need someone who is like equal, if not more confident than me to match that in an alpha male kind of setting. Right. And so that's what's working. And like, it's not putting the blame on yourself, but taking responsibility that the men you have attracted is because like they were attracted to you because you were giving off that energy of like, this is the type of match for me. Mm, so true and honestly I have noticed that it can shift a lot it can shift a lot even throughout your relationship and so it's it's important to be aware of that I realized in the beginning I was super feminine laid back for my partner organized and do everything and then as we became as we were together for mm. longer I started to be like oh well I'm gonna do this this, and this and then I started to feel burnt out and I was like fuck yeah and my partner was like no actually my partner said I want to spoil you and I want to do these things for you can you give me like give me the space to do that for you Right. And men actually yeah. feel men feel so good within themselves when they're able to book and organize something and they see you happy because of their doing that and they, if they don't. They're feminine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then again, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that because there are always going to be women who yes. naturally desire to be more masculine. And I'm not here to tell you to be feminine or masculine. No. I'm telling you to be deep down, like if you could be any way and a man would fucking love you, right? How do you really want to be? How do mm. you really truly want to be? Do you truly deep down want to book and organize absolutely everything and he just tags along? If that's what you want, then great. And for the rest not, of your relationship. Yeah. yeah, but we're not here to judge you for that, right? We're not here to say that's right or wrong. Or like deep down, what do you really desire? Do you truly desire a man who actually leads you and actually books and organizes and showers you with all this love and you are there receiving it all? Like if anything were possible, what do you actually desire? And I think for so many mm. of us women, we hear all these horror stories about men and when we find someone that's sort of okay or, you know, what is just like good, we, we accept that and we think that that's all that we're available for and that is simply not true. Like you are available for an incredible love that is just so deep and so next level where a guy, like Katie said, is willing to move mountains for you. My partner, literally, I have two cats. They killed this massive rat outside. He's like, babe, do you want me to get rid of that for you? I will I will pick it up with my fucking hands and put it in the bin for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like literally. literally. And there are men who women are still going after who won't even text them back. If he was really into you, he would. If he if he wanted, if he wanted to. to, he would. Yeah. Or he also just doesn't like you that much, and that's what that's... I was kind of saying before. Of like, we when we talk about this whole conversation, it's like, well, what can I do to to help him be more masculine? But a man is only going to be masculine for you. A man is only going to pursue you if he thinks you're worthwhile. And a guy thinking you're worthwhile doesn't mean you're worthless. This is the thing we need to get into. Mm. Women is like, you're just not the woman for him. And so if he isn't pursuing you, even though he's a masculine man, but he's not putting in the effort for you, you're not his woman. And so, bye, that's fine. I'm not your woman. You're not my man. I'm going to um, wait and only be available for the guy who I am, his, the, you know, that guy's woman. We always, often try to be like, well, I'm trying to make this work. You can't make it work if you're not seen as worthwhile for that guy. And your guy sees you as worthwhile. You never will have to change a man's mind on if you're worthwhile or not. And so, so many women can just get butthurt of like, why is he putting in the effort? Well, he just doesn't like you. Like, that's a thing. There's he nothing just, wrong with that because yeah, he just doesn't just like you. Partner. And that's good for both of you to mm. know that because there is someone like, else out there it. that's going to match. Force. Yeah. There yeah. is someone else out there that's going to match him so much better and mm. it's going to match you so much better. I literally saw a post the other day. I need to get out of Melbourne Gal Pals. I remembered why oh I got God. out of it, out of the group, <laughs> because all the stuff in there, I just find it so, like, what even? Toxic. Are you, what are you fucking asking like, me right now? Like, we all need trauma therapy. 
Yes, it's like um, I'm suspicious of my partner, so I went through his phone last night, and I'm like, and then like I found out he was cheating, and I'm like, okay, I get that you found out he was cheating, but I'm sorry, you went through his phone while mm-hmm. he's sleeping. Like this so That's much the level. Yeah, there is so much fucked up with that because you all you don't trust him, and no. you've bre- broken it anyway. <laughs> whole other thing. But in Melbourne Girl Pals, oh shit, what was I gonna say? In Melbourne Girl Pals, I saw oh yeah, this person, this girl, talk about how. Um, she never makes it past the honeymoon phase with a guy. And he eventually mm. turns around and says, actually, I don't like you that much. And she's like, what am I doing to make this happen? Probably nothing. It could be nothing. Yeah. It could just be yeah. that it's not right. And that's actually, aren't you happy to know that? Aren't you glad yeah. that a guy is willing and able to tell you, actually, I don't, I'm not that into you? That's a good yeah. thing to know. Well, what I was going to say is you don't have to force a guy to be in love with you, that's not the guy then for you. Like so many of us, like I trying to make it work. So I'm trying to make me fall in love with me. I'm trying to seduce me. You shouldn't have to seduce me. So I'm trying to seduce me. I'm I'm trying trying to seduce seduce him. him. It's like, you shouldn't have to seduce really like the guy who's meant for you. You just be, by being you, you are naturally seductive yes. to me. that's what i'm trying to say because so many women like in this whole masculine feminine i see like so much toxic toxic shit talk on shit. instagram talk shit i love <laughs> it new word it's like bullshit but it's toxic talk shit so so five much. ways to get a guy to become obsessed literally with you. how to manipulate a guy so that he is attached and bonded to you and i'm like um if there's natural chemistry if he's the one no matter what you do, like you can't even like make him not like you because he's, you know, oh, like literally, to you. literally, you know I mean? like I will have a mental breakdown in the middle of a day, be <laughs> crying. My boyfriend's there, like, babe, it's okay, and he's like, yeah. I love you, I love you. Like, there is nothing you can do to make a guy mm. the the right guy not in love with you. I, my partner has seen so many crazy parts of me, and he's like, I still love you, like. And that's the thing. Unconditionally. Yeah, well, practically unconditionally, but to, to an extent, right? Don't yeah, like you can't be a psycho. You can't be, like, threatening to hurt him and be, and be I'm going to break up with no. you and all this shit and be like, you need to love me unconditionally even though I'm being, like, full-blown full blown crazy and stuff, <laughs> right? But um, that's the, re- the reality is that the right – how do I explain it? Like, perhaps you have certain traits that in the past men haven't liked and then you therefore mm. want to change – but we're trying the, to hide or like, yeah, yeah, mold themselves. yeah. And even like I've been with guys who, because they're not the right one for me, they're super, I find them super clingy and they're wanting to cuddle all the time. They don't need to change that part of them. It's just that I'm not that into them because I'm yeah. into my partner and I want to cuddle him 24 yeah. seven. Right. So interesting. And what I was going to say is like, you shouldn't have to convince a man that you're the one for him. Like, you're literally so many women are trying to convince like trying to manipulate like how can I seduce him it's like if you're trying to convince a man almost like overcome objections with a man to show him that you're the one it's not aligned just like Mm -hmm. your ideal client if you need to convince a client they're not your ideal client I always say that like that is not alignment because your ideal client wants you and doesn't have objections right same with your man if you're convincing him you're going to get in this relationship be like wait I don't feel loved. I don't feel chosen. Yeah, because you manipulated him into into wanting you when he actually doesn't. And now you're complaining there's no um, no sparks there, like there's no chemistry there. Yeah, because you forced a guy and convinced him and persuaded him rather than naturally allowing him to be attracted to you. So if it's not working, don't force it because you should never have to force the right relationship. A hundred percent. Oh, my God. This has been such a great chat and something I just keep thinking about is my partner, like, one day he was telling me things he loves about me, and he was like, I just love, babe, that any time I'm sitting down, you just think of me as a seat. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> something so small like that, you don't realize that the right person will love that about you, and someone else will mm. be like, fucking hell, stop sitting on me 24-7, right? Mm. You don't need to change, like, who you are and the natural ways that you are in a relationship in order to get a guy to like you. You want to actually bring those out so that the right person is like, oh, my God, I love this girl. Exactly. And then doing all that work. So I'm in my 
wild free single phase of my life and um, not for long very in- no. intentionally well I don't know and that's the thing I don't have like a timeline on it like I know that my dream man is is, is inevitable that that relationship is going to come in at the perfect time but for maybe we should do like a part two actually of this because we're 45 minutes in of like how to prepare yourself for a relationship when you're single and like the energy of that of like calling him in being a match for him doing the work because you need to take responsibility and you can do so much healing outside of a relationship so that you're ready for one a to be in a relationship and so many people think mm. that in order to learn how to be in a relationship they just need to be in a shit ton of relationships when in reality you just actually need to be alone you need to be celibate you need to know yourself love yourself so fully and wholly to the fact that even when a guy comes around you're not going to entertain anything less than a, an, an 11 out of 10 not in looks but in like you know and what looks. you deserve well and it, that's what I mean, I mean like 11 out of 10 yeah for just massive attractiveness and and a match for you because you are so in yourself as well a hundred percent well thank you so much everyone for tuning in today however if you are loving this conversation and you are wanting to learn more about this then definitely jump into the conscious queens collective which is our 12 month experience which when you join you receive instant access to 50 plus pre-recorded masterclasses, as well as a monthly Q&A masterclass and a healing embodiment session. We have so many healings in there and um, trainings in there that actually teach about feminine masculine. I guess you do have, right? Feminine masculine. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, feminine masculine, but also the healings that really help you to tune deeper into yourself and clear things that might be standing in the way of actually attracting the person that you desire. But also, like Katie's talking about, will help to prepare you for your dream relationship. You want to be healed and you want to be whole before you meet your man. Like, And that is what enabled me to attract my current partner. If I had not done the work on myself and improved my communication, my self-love and all of those things, then when I met my man, he wouldn't have been attracted to me, right? It's if you want to attract your dream man, you need to be a match for that. And that involves doing the inner work and improving all of those things, not just your attachment style, but also the way you communicate, the way you deal with conflict, all of those things are so, so important. Yes. So if you are wanting to join that, we have a special code called podcast all in capital letters and you can get 10 percent off of the collective so that is 222 dollars off of the collective experience all of the links are in the show notes and we'll see you next time bye everyone bye everyone